Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Welcome back. We got a brand new episode of Strange Happenings coming your way tonight. I'm your host, Mikey, and as course, always riding shotgun, the bro host with the mo host, Bob Ranley, everybody. Bob, What's up? How's today? Good? Great. Great. Yeah? Good, good week so far? <laughs> I still have a half a sub in the fridge from Wario's, so I'm still good. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say it was it was exceptionally good today, Wario's. He's like, I hope we don't go Let's too go. long. I got the half sub in the oh fridge. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I feel bad about is that tonight, it was so guys. delicious and warm, and now <laughs> I've put it into the fridge where it's cold. But it's like, I'll reanimate that oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to name it. Yeah. <laughs> but then I'll feel bad eating it. But <laughs> Don't get too attached to your Wario sub. Bub. It's pretty amazing. Uh, everybody in the chat, what's up, guys? I see all you out there hanging out. The best moderator in the world, born not to run. Much love to him. Uh, make sure you guys go follow Necromechanimal on Instagram. Uh, all you guys listening, watching, we appreciate the hell out of each and every one of you. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, you got to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Everybody in the in uh, Apple, Spotify, YouTube Music, we're getting hit now. Our, our feed, I think, is starting to catch. And uh, YouTube Music app now, which is... I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> YouTube broke the other day, too. I think we're breaking things now. Yeah. Well... You know? Yeah, and I don't know if those... that It's back up, even. I think I checked it earlier today. I think today. it's back up, but... Um, but uh, great way to support the show, guys. Hit that uh, super stickers and super chat. Uh, something that I keep forgetting to mention. Uh, we never probably think for about the last it, yeah. eight episodes. So that was one of my things, just to remind you guys. Yeah. Great way to support the show. Uh, keep everything rocking and rolling. Uh, this is going to be a great episode tonight. We've got a lot to cover, so I think we should hop right in. Yeah. Uh, well, I do want to thank Stoner the Loner in Master Control tonight, uh, holding it down for us. Rock. Making everything look and sound great. Look at that old master control shot. And it's uh, a good temperature right now, so nobody's in there it's boiling. Nice down here. Yeah, no, it's nice feels down good. Here. Uh, we're going to go from not having heat to the air conditioner firing on. Um, but uh, it's it's been nice and cool, feeling good. We're ready to rock and roll. Absolutely. Bob, you want to take it away? You may start out. Sure. Cool. I'm down with this. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a good conversation about this afterwards. But uh, starting off the uh, futurism article we have that says fringe theory claims the sun may be conscious. Um, it's wild. So <laughs> I love how this starts off. A bong rip of a theory suggests <laughs> that all matter possesses some form of mind or consciousness, not just animals, including, as one biologist suggests, the sun itself. In 2004, Giulio Tononi proposed what he called the Integrated Information Theory of Consciousness, which suggests that consciousness is essentially almost everywhere. Uh, the respected neuroscientist Christoph Koch argued in Scientific American that if lumps of matter can form into human bodies and become conscious, there's no reason that groups of elementary particles could neither. So in 2021, when biologist and author Rupert Sheltrake published a paper questioning whether the sun itself might be conscious... Um, there's a quote from Sheldrake, quote, consciousness does not need to be confined to brains. The link between minds and physical systems seems to be through rhythmic electromagnetic fields, which, of course, are present in our brains. They are also present in and around the sun, and these could be the interface between the solar mind and the body of the sun. And Rupert Pretty Sheldrake, <clears throat> isn't he the guy that has the epigenetics theory that we pass down Basically, our, our traits and interests uh, through basically this kind of invisible field that's tied to our DNA, and it's all encoded within us. Um, and, and, you know, he's got a lot of interesting theories about, about consciousness, but the guy is OG, old school. I know the name very well. I just don't know. I'm not super familiar with his work. I mean, I know the name. I know I should be more familiar, but... Where did they start steering towards figuring out that? I mean, I get it. I get the the end point of the thought of like, okay, yeah. well, if it's based off electric magnetic fields and the sun's doing that as well, so is there a consciousness? Like, I just never thought like. I mean, that makes you think a lot differently about how you're interacting with the world. Yeah, makes me feel bad <clears throat> for cutting the grass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've been there. How many bees I've torn up in my clover patches in my backyard. Yeah. I mean, it's 
everything. I mean, the Native Americans believed that the rocks, the sand, the water, everything was conscious. And now they're coming out of, you know, talking about crystals being alive. And why That's what you're saying. Yeah. Ancient sites are have so much diorite. Most of it's like 60% crystalline. So when you have certain elements that are incorporated into, you know, it's essentially technology at that point. Crystals can grow. They can multiply. They have basically some sort of interdimensional higher vibration to them Hmm. where there's, uh, you know, eighth dimensional crystals that are being created and 4D crystals and then and then boiling that down and creating these quasi crystals, which basically proves that the universe is a fractal in nature, which we've talked about many times on the show. Okay, Um, but there's you know, there's a lot of things that are coming out about all the things we talk about that this 3D world is it's a light of matrix essentially is what they're finding by by these uh, really, really strange uh, focus with with crystals seem to be a big part of it. And there's a lot of crystal in the earth. So, right. No, I mean, I can I can go there. I mean, it's a hard you know, it's one of those like uh, we've been talking about today of just like breaking down different paradigms of like we're talking about you know, maybe this has lost faith in it, so you're kind of seeing it retooled, or like we're talking about just discourse and how conversations where it used to be just people shouting over the way. But like now we're getting into science where we're having to look at some of our scientific beliefs and we're going to start going. Oh, we're going to. I think go. we're going to start really like remodeling some of those things, or there's going to be some groundbreaking work coming up. And yeah. maybe part of that is with AI as well. Maybe it's you take. Accelerate. Right. Maybe you take what used to take a whole team of people or a once in a century or a millennia Mm -hmm. you get a einstein or a tesla or a a whoever um that really advances the movement of progress in certain areas now what if you have ai that can help you really expand upon i mean that's wild to think like we it's too wild we might start solving all kinds of things but yeah inevitably we're going to create problems from those though then as well right yeah yeah so then you'll need a bigger, smarter computer to solve that problem that it created, but then that problem will be created from that one. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where we go with it and how we actually wield that, because historically we kind of, like, hey, you want to set off a nuclear bomb? Sure, let's set off, like, 500,000 of them. <laughs> you ever seen that map, like the sped-up timeline of the entire globe of, like, the first country, us getting the nukes, mm-hmm. and then whoever else got them, and then it starts showing, like, each individual flag of each country. Yeah. And it has a ticker under them, and it says, who's setting off how many? Yeah. And at a certain point, dude, it just looks like the 4th of July. The whole Earth is And they're engulfed. just nuke and 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 nuke. So it's like, did we have to do all that? Like, what was the point in all that? Did you really need to test that many nuclear bombs? Like, even that kind of stuff. Most people don't realize it or think about it. Yeah. Because, again, you're not doing it in somebody's backyard where they can see it. Maybe it causes problems to the earth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. That was a little bit of a call to sec of a rant there, but it's just interesting what we do with power. And, and Kyle and I were even talking stoner, you know, like, just sucks that we can't get to the point of being benevolent with it. We're like, I want a jet pack. I want a Jetson car. I think we should have but if this you figured out where... Finding out that the sun is conscious and these kind of theories that you know people have been talking about consciousness and everything's conscious then you start to whoa now science is changing frame of mind's changing and what if now you're not worried about these simple things that are trivial at best if you think how about, about this how about this how, how religion not that i'm a big religious person but i'll go this way religion has had to change and adapt to science yeah science may have to adapt not to religion, but to something that the is not necessarily unknown. scientific yet yeah. or understood scientific that seems magic, but it's woo woo religious magic, yeah. whatever, under that <clears throat> whole umbrella. Mm-hmm. Sure, because science is like, we can't prove it, we can't quantify it, et cetera. Not yet. They're doing it right now. You're going to. Yeah. You're going Headline, to. Headline The sun is conscious. We know for a fact, which means that it's some kind of giant entity that can what? Think? affect other things around it communicate 
using the sun as a springboard for some kind of broader communication system. You know, these quantum entanglement communication systems where they're, you know, sending basically communications through massive long distances using quantum entanglement. Uh, again, Some of I, those things are coming I out. I told you about that being a part of a show story, Bro. a storyline of a show I just started watching. Yeah, Three Bodies. I don't want to, I don't want to give it away in case anybody wants, wants to watch Spoiler it. alert, it's pretty new. It's pretty new. It's not but, like we're talking about Interstellar for the 20th time. If you haven't seen that, sorry. I almost mentioned it. I almost <laughs> mentioned it once already the show. <laughs> when you said something about the crystals and going in these different dimensions, yeah. I was just like I'm, I'm Matthew McConaughey yep. inside of that weird yes, library room. That's it. That's the Tesseract. Yes, dude. That's where I don't know if it's a Tesseract, but that's just the word I use. These crystalline structures are creating worlds within worlds within Think worlds. Think of it like being inside of a funhouse in the mirrors. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And infinitely fractalizing things out to where, like, right. really, what if, wow, this is deep, we are all one, right? That whole interconnected, this inter, interconnected, this quantum level. Uh, but we're what if it literally is just like we're just one entity and we have the lived Godhead. in a house of mirrors? Yeah. And our universe is reflected out from us, but I am you and you are me and we are all together, as the Beatles said, right? Yeah. That's really bizarre. I can't almost conceive of that. Now, here's my question. If that's the case, when I pass away, mm-hmm. where does my... Back into the hole. You go back into the hole. So what started all of this? Into the higher dimensions. What started all this? <sighs> that's the greatest question of all time. <laughs> Because when they, like I said, when they're these crystal models, 8D, 4D, they start breaking down these. And it, I'm a moron, basically, to even I try know, to explain. Bo Diddley. Bo Diddley. Yeah. Um, but you know, when it when it breaks down to all these different dimensions, at the smallest point, you have to observe these things for them to even become real. So you have to have a conscious observer. To even see, because otherwise it's just light. It's we're literally living in this ball of light. Everything, which pretty is much a light, light matrix, is what they're calling this. That makes sense. And it's a sphere that we're living in, in the shadow of a much more absolutely mind-bending uh, structure, as well. That's above us. That we're literally Are living you in, the we're shadow. in the shadow. Flat Earth. Well, it's they call it a sphere, not a plane, but you know, the, 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 I think there's alternate. Maybe there's an alternate reality where there is flat Earth, there's spherical Earth, and it's you know turtles all the way down, just in uh, many different levels. Who knows? Maybe there is a two D flat Earth that they're that living good. in the shadow of us. <laughs> <laughs> like an ant farm. Oh man. Speaking of which, I gotta give a real quick shout out to yeah, and this do. is one of the weirdest shout outs I'll ever give to my Brian Shrimp that just died. Oh no. I had an ecosphere. <laughs> it looks like a snow globe. It looks like a snow oh, globe, shit. but inside that snow globe is like a little branch and some seaweed and some water and then like a separation of water and yeah. air. And it's fully sealed. There used to be four brine shrimp in it when I first bought it. And I bought this thing in like, I swear, 2012. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been over a decade. Yeah. And when I first got it, it had four. And I, being the master of this universe, set it in the sun too directly. It got too hot. Cooked yep. three of them yeah. in the first year or two. One shrimp lived on <laughs> up until... What, what a week happened? ago, he just he's a hold. Well, he's old. I mean, he's he old. No he can friends. only molt so many he's times. Probably and lonely. Hang depressed. out on the stick by himself and yeah. chase it when I clean the inside and scrub it because it's just it's sealed. Yeah. So that gas puts off. It grows some algae yeah. or whatever for him or her or whatever that thing, and it's eaten. <laughs> you know, and then it would. It was uh, one of the coolest things I've ever had i would yeah. love to get another one i don't even know if I they remember make where them you anymore. got that i know that they're sea monkeys right it was down at a store here in town called tiger tree that i don't know if it's still there in the short north but um yeah anyhow ripped my little brian shrimp i don't even know what i'd call him <laughs> you never named him i'd call him red red 
Oh, trying to get a scholarship. How creative, right? Yeah, but he was great. I know. Appreciate it. <laughs> the chat. I know. Getting sympathies for a brine shrimp is wild. But I'll tell you what. That was a whole 2012. That's a long time. But I am the entity. Yes. That it can't perceive. You're its godhead. Hundred yeah. percent. And I cooked three of his friends. So he was yeah. like, "I'm gonna stay in line." I bet he was working out in there. He was like, "I gotta stay in shape." Yeah. In case the lady, uh, another lady, uh, eventually drops. Case, by. Yeah. In case that dipshit puts his name in the sun too again. Solitary too confinement is what he was. Yep. Anyhow, do you want to do this next one? Yes, go, absolutely. Go uh, scientist theorize that the theorize. earth may be an intelligent entity which again is what the people down in peru and brazil that work with ayahuasca and and people that shamans that have been working with peyote and mushrooms have all been saying this this intelligent entity the earth mother earth we've all heard that even growing up as kids you know, we didn't have parents that were hippies, but we still heard the term Mother Earth as it's as if it's an entity of some kind. Yeah. Um, so pointing to evidence that fungi is communicating underground suggests that large scale networks of life could far uh, could form a vast invisible planetary intelligence. A group of astrobiologists are asking the thought provoking question. If a planet like Earth can be alive, can it also have a mind of its own? The planetary intelligence they refer to describes what the term uh, they term as the collective knowledge and cognition of an entire planet. In other words, if just as an individual ant appears to possess very little intelligence, working as a whole, a colony displays an impressive level of it. Uh, with this in mind, they look at the Earth as a collective whole, while well, the process is an activity on and, and within our planet. So collectively, they claim that all biological, geological, meteorological, and all human activity together creates uh, basically this planetary intelligence that tackles global issues like climate crisis, biodiversity loss, or pollution. We must treat the Earth as a living, intelligent entity. And if this sounds familiar, it's because essentially what indigenous people have been saying for centuries, though they face uh, ceaseless ridicule and and violent terrorist uh, <clears throat> terrorizations for doing so, it's interesting that they additionally put forward the concept that planetary intelligence is likely the key to any civilization's ability to traverse the universe and discover extraterrestrial life. Interesting. There you go. The Earth is conscious. I mean, think about it. It, it does... I think change based off of its environment. I mean, we're seeing what we're doing to, you know, with pollution and uh, scooping all the fish out of the ocean and, and oh, just yeah. garbage patch and the weather changing. And uh, yeah, we, we kind of look like uh, mold from high above. Yeah, well, like a like bacteria. A spreading infection yeah. on the planet. Yeah. We don't live very harmoniously. with. I will say this. If you ever go out to, and I think it's in Sedona, um, they have a lot of, like, strict laws about the aesthetics of your mm -hmm. buildings, right? Remember yeah. Kevin told us there's it's the only McDonald's, McDonald's that has green art. That one or two that is two. not red. Yeah. The top of the McDonald's is green, like a sage green, because yeah. everything blends into the hillside so you can't see it. And it's, mm -hmm. like, very... You know, uh, uh, environmentally focused on like the aesthetic of like blending in and like kind of like not being too intrusive, like not too like brutalistic, which mm -hmm. is like, I'm going to put a skyscraper here, you know, like, ugh, yeah. this doesn't look good. So, yeah, from certain parts, or if you go over like the top of like a big strip mine, you're like, what the hell is happening there? Are they digging a Mordor? <laughs> like, it looks like a, a, a you know, switch back trail to Hades underworld. Yeah. I mean, it's just this massive gaping hole and they're all over the place, but let's say maybe that's something too, where it's just like, okay, so you dig a hole in your backyard, it'll fill in with dirt. You dig this giant hole. That's going to fit, you know, as long as we're not digging it next to my property where you're going to have like a house go caving in there. But again, we can't trust ourselves not to do things like that. Side note, underground systems, mm -hmm. just thinking out loud about this. I've been watching stranger things again. <laughs> and I think the scope of underground buildings needs to be really like spun up harder. I don't think people really, and I don't even really understand how deep they go or how much there probably is going on subterraneanly. And just 
take Jordan, right? And, uh, Petra, mm-hmm. um, Egypt. Kuru. All most yeah. of these sites, people are like, "Wow, look at all that!" And it's like you see, it's kind of like right Pat. You see, maybe ten percent, twenty percent above ground, the rest underground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I always thought it'd be cool to have a house where, like, you just showed up in my house and there was just a mailbox. Like you'd park your car and then all of my house was underground. And then I would use all of my upground for, I'd have a barn and stuff and I could use all that grass, but I wouldn't need yeah. my house to be up there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just interesting concepts like that because you can do it so easily. I mean. That's a hobbit hole, bud. No, no. I'm saying on a large scale. Yeah. Like. Governmental well, drills. how many rooms did the Hobbit Hole have in the very beginning? Hey, Burton, Burton. appreciate that, my man. He likes the Warriors. Oh, it was nice. so good today, Burton. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll side. <laughs> I'll side swipe this whole episode. Just tell you how good Warriors was. <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, think about that. Like, I mean, even the fact that I think there's probably underwater bases. Yeah, for possibly sure. Possibly not ours either. Oh, for sure. I think that's where they're coming from. Hiding a in lot plain of these sight type UAPs, stuff. I think they're coming from the oceans. I think that's the, the lesson one of... one way down in the Bermuda Triangle. I think that's the lesson of 2024, right? Mm-hmm. Is it's all hiding in plain sight. It's all right yeah. here. Yeah. Well, we'll get Everything. Of, we'll get to some of that. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to need that other half a sandwich. It's so good. <laughs> I'm just dreaming. All right. Uh, so do you want me to do this one? I can do this one. You got it? Yeah. So this is from our friends, uh, Emily and uh, from singularfortian.com. And uh, this is our buddy. Uh, Tobias. Tobias. Yes. Emily and Tobias Wayland. Uh, I guess you check out that episode with Tobias if you haven't seen it. Uh, killer stuff. But these Tobias guys. Is great. This is one of their latest articles. Uh, a family from Zimbabwe reported reportedly terrorized by invisible goblins. A family from Magawe, North Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, claimed recently that they're under siege by a troop of invisible goblins. And uh, the family, three children, ages 13, 12, and 8, along with their elderly grandparents, said that the strange incidents have continuously escalated since they began in November and include unexplained noises in the walls, objects mysteriously vanishing, doors and windows moving on their own, lights flickering, Flood disappearing while it's cooking, uh, sorry, food disappearing while it's cooking, and the children being physically assaulted by invisible forces. Uh, sounds like a poltergeist situation, but we'll continue on. We don't know what to do anymore. It started last November. One morning, our children woke up with their heads shaved. We thought it was a one time thing. The next day, our youngest child woke up in the middle of the night screaming. He had been stabbed in the leg with a knife. He also woke up with his head shaved again. And said, uh, said the children's grandmother, they were recently sent to stay with their maternal grandmother in South Africa, but the bizarre occurrences followed them. Resuming within three days of their arrival, as a result, the children were brought home to Zimbabwe. The children were also sent to stay with their neighbors, but this proved similarly futile since the invisible creatures seemed to follow them there too. Goblin attacks are reported with surprising frequency in Zimbabwe. In 2019, local prophet... Madziba Shepherd Nazira, uh, the leader of the Zvakarawa, I'm not even going to try, church, claimed that goblins were to blame for a string of deaths that took 10 members from a single family in Zimbabwe. And in 2018, they were blamed for the deaths of two children in the village and for slaughtering scores of livestock in the same area several months later. Yeah, not sure if the prophet what kind of, uh, you know, background this, this prophet has, but, mm-hmm. uh, uh, seems like a, a pretty strange dude. Um, but you know, it sounds like gremlins, goblins, invisible forces that follow them around. Who knows? Maybe they're, um, like, you know, like monsters, Inc. That's what I'm getting when I see these little graphics and images. They look like where the wild things are. You got one playing a flute. They got these yeah. like cloven hooves. They got some that look very un- unenthusiastic about being are. goblins. The guy yeah. on the far right doesn't look like he <laughs> wants to be at work. So <laughs> He looks like old One boy dude's from jamming a guitar. Space. That would definitely be me. I'm haunting you. <laughs> no, no, you got to play an E minor. It's scary. Can't play a G chord and haunt somebody. No, you can't. 
Can't play a D major and haunt someone. <laughs> Better come in there with a B sharp minor or some shit. Yep. Anyhow, uh, you know, yeah, I think that's a common thread. It, it also kind of sounds like poltergeisty. Shaving your head, yeah. getting stabbed by things. Like, not saying I've ever had an encounter with a poltergeist, but I just, I think historically, and I'm not trying to give them a bad name if they don't have one, but yeah. historically, they're not known as the friendliest guests no. at the Airbnb no, for like, spirits. They're like the pesky pests of of the paranormal world. They're like Casper's mean brothers. I don't know. Was that Casper's brothers in that film or were those just other ghosts that he perished with at the same time? Yeah. They were like his uncles. That was Casper's uncles. Yeah. I think so. The three. How about that? Well, that would suck to hang out with those guys forever. Yeah. Uh, in 2023, nearly 30 girls in Columbia were taken to the hospital after playing with a Ouija board. What? Uh, the students had reportedly suffered anxiety attacks after using. Where's this coming from? Divinatory. It's the same article. Wait, really? Uh, using a divinatory, uh, uh, divinatory device at school. Less than six months prior, November 2022, 11 teens ranging from uh, age 13 to 17 were found by teachers. Uh, <laughs> Remember when we were in like fifth grade, fourth or fifth grade? Not really. When but everybody sure. was into Bloody Mary. I does think anybody they put remember? Out like, does anybody our remember? Put out like a notice. Like, oh yeah, this is about to stop because people would just the girl, spontaneously start crying. In the class. girls were in our They're grade. So out. All became completely obsessed <laughs> with doing Bloody Mary. I'm still not going to go during do study it. hall and I recess don't think it'll do in anything. the bathroom. It turned into a thing. Yeah, and and it became so insane that people were doing it at home. Yeah, and. Uh, I mean, shout out if anybody's heard of... I don't know if that's an Ohio thing, but the story goes, if you guys haven't heard, that Bloody Mary People know was, the story. A queen, was a Victorian age royal. I don't know the story. From Bloody Mary was uh, a Google duchess it, or a princess or something. Don't even know. Just some lady Europe. that you would conjure by saying. It's right. like Beetlejuice. But she had gotten murdered... And so the there were these people that were trying to bring her back, and the way that they brought her back was saying Bloody Mary ten times into the mirror. And so then you could conjure Bloody Mary through the mirror. And it, it, and who knows if the, those girls there will ever be seen. a river of blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Vigo uh, shit. Yeah. Like floating, head floating in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was... No, it's not. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, that turned into a thing. Yeah. That it, really it got a, into it. They got people freaked out a little bit. It was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then there was light as a feather, stiff as a board. You remember that? Never participated light, in it. Light yeah. as a feather. People would do it at sleepovers and slumber parties. Like uh, I've heard I know tell. Some, I know some girls that have played around with that stuff, and they were able to lift people off the ground. You know, these little fifth grade girls yeah. are able to, you know, yeah. collectively. I've heard, again, I've heard the stories. I've never participated. He's just focused. Never safe. done a Ouija light board. Light as a feather, never stiff as a board. Light as a feather, light as a feather stiff as a board. Never. Um, but do, kid, do, do people do that anymore? Because now there's tablets and iPhones. and yeah, there's actual People are screwing around with a Ouija board anymore. Yeah, you got an iPhone. You got Bloody the Mary. Apple Vision Pro. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we had there's... to make up shit to, to keep busy. <laughs> How is it that we've gone this far and like we don't have any like modern equivalency yeah. of the witchcraft that we had when we were children? It seems more adventurous. Why is it that we let all the magic go that we had? We used to have all kinds of sweet magical stuff is what it sounds like. It sounds yeah. like we were... Yeah, we This were is crazy. More, yeah. This would be like if the ancients were like, why did you stop using pyramids and all this sweet technology? We're like, yep. oh, dude, we just we had cell phones. We thought we were there. We went this way when we could have... We actually gave way. up more as we've gone further. That's we've interesting. We've given up a lot. Yeah, we've given this up This is what I'm saying, where science is going to have to take some of the woo and bring it in. Yeah. Validate the woo. Mm-hmm. Embrace the woo. Materialist science. Not is all the be, woo, but enough woo. Yeah, it's going to have to integrate uh, with just nuts and bolts. Materialist science is going to have to give a little bit with some of these things that are just unexplainable. And, you know, maybe there is something to light as a feather, stiff as a board in some of those concepts of I think there's something know, using to... energy to levitate, using the collective energy. Fair enough. That's what light as a feather, stiff as a board is. It's the collective focus of each person that's, you know, you only have two fingers that you each have. Yeah. And you're just saying it in, in this mantra. Yeah. And the energy from 
is coming through your fingertips I or whatever. I don't know. It, maybe it's not know. real at all, but uh, it seems fun to – it'd be way cooler if it was. Heather said, embrace the woo next T-shirt. <laughs> hey, man, I'm there like – TSR, embrace the woo. I think the woo should be a character, like one of these little yeah. goblins, yeah. but like a lovable looking, cuddly, fluffy, weird woo. Like, yeah. Maybe the unenthused With guy like on the right would rather be the woo. Crystals, his horns. Instead of that, he just doesn't look, look, he's shoulders slumped back. He's like, this, what the hell? We're going to do frumpy. this again. The one on the top. We're going to shave frumpy. this kid's head again. He's yeah. clearly not getting it. He's frumpy. The guy on the bottom left looked like he might have just hit the bong a little too much before going to work. Yeah. He's like, where are we going, man? Um, anyhow, so the next article, you want this one? Or you want me to jump into this one? Go ahead. The Unexplained. This comes from fizz.org. Um, giant Swedish archive logs paranormal phenomena. Newspaper clippings, books, and firsthand accounts of people who said they visited other planets are cataloged in a giant Swedish archive on paranormal phenomena attracting the curious and researchers from around the world. The Archives for the Unexplained, or the AFU, claims to be the world's biggest library of paranormal phenomena. I just want to pause right there. The Vatican's is bigger. Yeah, clearly. Play. With 4.2 kilometers, 2.6 miles, pause. The Vatican, the Vatican has 50 miles. Yeah. Play. Of shelves running underground. Klaus Zvon, 65, and Anders Liljegren, 73, who run the archive located in the southeastern town of Norkoping, say they are neither superstitious nor believers, but rather curious investigators of the unknown. Pause again. Neither superstitious nor believers, but rather curious investigators. So coming at it with like, you know, hopefully a balanced approach, it seems. So the Archives for the Unexplained, the name of both the library and the association that has collected documentation for more than 50 years, is mainly comprised of books, but also more original documents, such as first-hand accounts of paranormal activity recorded on tape and photos of ghosts. This is a cool library. Um, Reminds me of about, the Edgar Casey archive in Virginia or something like that. Well, just the cultivation of it, too. And, the, you know, yeah, you could do this online, I guess. But, you know, maybe not everything that's been written down actually made it to Amazon.com. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, maybe not all books yeah. are online, which, whatever, we should push to have the, the great amount of knowledge we have should all be everywhere at once to people. But You remember when we covered the AI reading the Sumerian tablets? Sure. Apparently that's all done and built in the UCLA archive now. I thought it'd be interesting if we did an episode where we j literally just took a tab. You can take a tablet off the shelf, pull it down, and re and translate the whole you thing. You know what it's going to say? I don't know what it's going to say. But if we get the Person X Enuma owes me yeah, and it three might, bags of grain. They have the Enuma Elish. Not all of it, those, but a lot like of it will be. The of Gilgamesh. Yeah. You can pick those books. Sure. So... But this I'm just saying, a lot of the track. early, early writings yeah. and stuff like that, the first well, the reason they wanted it for was tablets. for inventory and stuff. The first cuneiform was, was for, were marks to keep track of debt. Debt and yeah. goods, and yeah. we have like, this much. You have say, two apples. Well, I was saying earlier about Ishmael. You're trying to predict the future and how, yeah. you know, instead of, like, we got to move with food, we can make food, we can keep food, and then we can, like, control our destiny a little more. Um, yeah. And once you, and agriculture took off, you had to be able to track all those goods. Well, that was the other part of it. Yeah. Well, that's building. when money started coming yes. out too. So, so the library Babylon. receives about three hundred visits a year by appointment only. Oh, which I think that's cool. You think we're getting in? No. <laughs> the archives are in the process of being digitalized, <laughs> and many of the documents can already be consulted on a server. That's wonderful. All that is needed is an access code, which the pair are more than happy to share. Um, the AFU is, is uh, administered by an association of volunteers and hobbyists. I understand. Also covers the folklore, the beliefs associated with paranormal phenomena in general, said Svon. Quote, we love to see this as a social thing, impacting society all around the world and impacting lives. People whose experiences and accounts are not taken seriously in society can find their rightful place in the archive, says museum curator Magnus Bartos. Quote, the archive says something is unexplained. That means we shouldn't reject it. We should investigate it. We should be open. That's a great, you know, just kind of like last quote. One of the things um, it reminds me of is like when I was in nursing school, they always said, believe your patient. 
if they say this is what they feel like or this is what's going on, believe them because, you know, we don't have everything figured out. That was the one thing in medicine they always stress so hard. Like, we don't have it all figured out, but we know how to do this, this, and this. But there's going to come times when, like, we just, you know, something's going to be new or this, that. So, like, listening to them. And even this guy saying, like, you know, it might sound wild and fantastical. Again, I'm watching Stranger Things again. That first season when uh, Winonia, Winonia Ryder is trying. I was <laughs> Winona. I lo- that's the only show that I'll watch the, the credits roll in because I always love going the Duffer Brothers. Yeah. I don't know why nobody's ever said that in that way. But to me, it reminds me of Duff Beer from The Simpsons. And, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so I'm always yeah. like the Duffer Brothers. <laughs> So I always read Winonia. Oh. There's a couple other names in there. But anyhow, nobody believes her at first. Mm-hmm. Wild when experiences Will, Will are going disappears. on. Demogorgon is yeah. trying to come through the wall. How do you tell somebody about that? Yeah. People have wild experiences all the time that, again, are. you're not always with somebody. You're going to have a lot of, maybe not a lot, maybe it's dependent upon the person and a lot of factors. You but can read people, though. You'll have a, ver- you'll have a variety of singular you moments in life that will happen. Like I, I saw a shooting star that no one else sees next to me. Like my wife's not there. You're not there. Nobody's there. It's kind of a singular moment type thing. So again, in these where you don't have somebody witness with you, how do you find commonality and common ground to like talk mm-hmm. to somebody about it? So I think it's the smartest thing because <clears throat> if you're open and you're like, Hey, cool. That's your story. You told me I can't really say for sure if it's real or not. I will, I'll listen. That's kind of what we've always said. Right. I won't say you're legit or not. I don't know. It's your it's your encounter, your interaction. But if you get all those, you might start realizing, oh, this person had the same encounter as this person. That doesn't make any sense if they're not correlated. It'd be like saying, well, there's pyramids over here. Why are there pyramids over there? They're probably connected. There's just another, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm causal relationship in a certain way yeah and it encourages people to come forward and share their stories again like i wonder how many people don't say anything ever yeah oh majority i would say majority those have to be the best stories too for sure for sure barna like across the board yeah how many people are getting on history channel or one of these shows or william shatner's the unexplained like yeah i can't wait to get on a tv show in front of millions of people and Look like a kook. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Unless it's, you know, you're, you're, you know, someone like Karen Wilkinson, for example, where she stayed quiet for years and years and years and years about her story and everything that was happening to her. But after a while, you just feel compelled, you know, to share and to meet other people that are having those experiences too and do talks and go on podcasts. Uh, Karen was just on Strangeology. I'm a, I, I have to write this idea down in a separate space and I don't even want to mention it right now because <laughs> this might be one of the greatest ideas I've ever had. <laughs> All right, let's have it. No, I can't right now. Okay. Must, By the way, Bob has it. had so many ideas that uh, a year or two later that you've talked about and then it's like a real thing that somebody's either making money off of or it's, somebody's created. It's going to freak me out. If I, see a, <laughs> if I see anything like what I just thought up right now, that's it. I'm going to Mexico and starting my life over as a bullfighter. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, two weeks ago, guys, we covered uh, Gudung Padang, uh, Gudung Padang, and talked about this paper that recently came out, multidisciplinary. It's gotten a ton of heat, and there's a whole what seems like an army of people, scientists, researchers, archaeologists, that are trying to basically disprove this uh and so they're working really hard to get this retracted uh by the journal that published it uh so this is from the daily grail last year the ancient site of gudung padang in indonesia garnered worldwide media attention after the publication of a paper in the peer-reviewed journal archaeological perspection uh, that made the astonishing claim that the site could be the world's oldest pyramid and not just by a little but twenty-eight thousand years uh, which would predate uh, the Giza pyramids, which were 5,000 years ago. So we're talking many, many, many millennia 
uh, older. So the orthodox archaeologists and skeptics were quick to hit, hit back against the claim. And those objections also made worldwide news in New York Times Smithsonian Magazine. And now the criticism seemed to have won the day, at least for now, as the journal has now officially retracted the paper. The retraction note does not provide the response from the authors, unfortunately and perhaps unfairly. However, it can be read at Danny Hillman uh, Nacho Weed Ja does, which not a we dodge us. Last week, I pronounced that two weeks ago with when, when Roscoe hosted. I nailed that damn name. Not a we judge us. Yeah, I, I nailed it. Ask it's anybody a, in the chat, man. I was on top of it. It's uh, interesting. It's a hard name to say, but it's so it's a good one. Danny Hillman, his Facebook page. You guys can uh, maybe we should link that. Uh, but it's posted earlier today on behalf of all the off the off. Thurs, who expressed profound disappointment at the unwarranted retraction, along with the contextual documentation such as the email exchanges leading up to the retraction. And so, uh, and, you know, kind of want to hit this and just see, I'll read a little bit of what Danny Hillman has said here. The unjust retraction of the groundbreaking research A Call for Academic Integrity is the title of this Facebook post. We, the authors, express profound disappointment at the unwarranted retraction of our paper titled Geoarchaeological Prospecting of Gudung Padang, Buried Prehistoric Pyramid in the West, uh, published by the Archaeological Perspection by Wiley on October 20, 2023. The retraction is solely based on unfounded claims raised by third parties who hold differing opinions and disbelieve in the evidence, analysis, and conclusion. Despite our diligent efforts to address and refute the unfounded claims, which with robust scientific data, the Wiley team chose to align with the assertions of anonymous individuals. To our knowledge, neither the anonymous third parties nor the Wiley team has provided conclusive evidence or offered sufficient scientific uh, rationale to substantiate their decisions to retract our paper based on an alleged major error. Uh, so the decision to retract our paper for a severe form of censorship, uh, blatantly disregarding the fundamental principles of scientific inquiry, and that's the thing. You get it retracted. You go through all this work to get these guys' work, and you pound away at, at Wiley's, the group that posted this, this uh, basically the academic paper. And where is the discourse? Where is the debate back and forth? Is there some paper that maybe they could write to disprove this? instead of getting it retracted and pulled down, what kind of a quasi-scientific universe are we living in right now? I I don't get it. How about writing a paper and publishing that of all your ideas going back and forth? So, I mean, this guy's saying that they haven't given any evidence or given any data to rebuttal any of these, these theories or proposals within their paper. And it's just, to me, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, I was talking to Jeffrey Wilson, I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, his new book, Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley uh, Expanded Edition, right. which is for sale. Graham Hancock uh, shouted Jeffrey out on GrahamHancock.com okay. and posted on, uh, didn't even mention Jeffrey by name, but just said this is a really useful um, right. book for anybody researching mountains in Ohio, blah, blah, blah. And so that went nuts in this Facebook group called Disproving Archaeology. And this group has thousands and thousands of people. But they basically posted this link to what Graham Hancock wrote and then started bringing in all these people that are just bashing Jeffrey's book that know nothing about it. And so one of the rebuttals of of these posts was our video – about Jeffrey talking about giant skeletons being found at Serpent Mound to somehow make Jeffrey look like a kook, but never referencing the video that we actually did with Jeffrey that was two parts that explains what his book was about. His book doesn't say anything outrageous. It's just that Graham Hancock talked about it. 
So it blew up into this huge thing. And Jeffrey gets in there and starts talking science and starts hitting back with, you know, and and kind of letting him know, like, this is completely unwarranted. You're not even referencing my work. Have you read the book? Yeah. Here's this is the actual episode with the strange road where I break down, you know, the overarching parts. So it's like you have these groups that just hit back so hard to try to if you're, you know, calling him, he's not an archaeologist, he's not this. But then they don't realize that Jeffrey's a, a you know, a, basically was a physics professor, uh, worked for NASA with, you know, he's got a scientific background. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a shame, but this is kind of another example of uh, these groups that get together to just knock out any debate or conversation. But Jeffrey's Facebook group, Friends of Serpent Mountain, if you guys aren't a part of that, absolutely blew up through this whole thing that happened. Yeah, all they're going to do is direct they're, people to the actual truth. Yeah. So, and so then you fine. had a bunch of It's the comments. Streisand effect. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So don't look over here. It's the wizard behind the curtain. was so good for them. Well, it's, the more you don't want somebody to look at it, the more they'll be able to look at it. Yeah. Would you just look at it? Yeah. Just, just look take at a look it. at it. Just look at it. Just look at that. <laughs> uh, here we go, Bob. This is right up your alley. I think yeah. you should. I think you should take this next one. I think I found this one. Yeah, but this is because it. You know, I've got that Michael Cremo filter. Uh, exactly. When I see anything that falls into that category, I'm like, "What is this?" So anytime I see really old and it shouldn't be there, such as researchers unearth a three million year old <laughs> tool, I get interested. So yeah. it comes from Discover Magazine. Um, the discoveries push back the date of one of humans' earliest technological advances. Um, ancient tools buried for millions of years in Kenya may be the oldest example yet of our ancestors' technological prowess. The tools recently discovered on the Hama Peninsula in Lake Victoria are now the earliest known examples of Oldowan technology, stretching its known start date back by as many as 400,000 years. Just a little... You know, because, you know, we're living to 70, 80 years, right? 400,000 years, that's just a little bit. It's not much. Inconceivable. Yeah. So just to get on my soapbox on and off there, the um, Oldowan Toolkit is a term anthropologists use to describe the distinct technology that lasted for millions of years before Homo sapiens ever walked the earth. These tools usually involved very controlled rock flaking or, like, napping or, you know, rock, rock napping. Like, people still do it. Hit one stone against another stone. Ancient hominins chipped off sharp, thin slivers, leaving a sharp edge stone behind that would be in, would have been good for chopping or scraping. These uh, slivers could also have been used as uh, sewing materials and other things. The Nyayanga excavation site where the stone tools were found is a lush tropical place with deep gullies. As these gullies erode, extremely old layers of dirt and sediment and sometimes ancient fossils and tools are exposed. Rick Potts, the director of the Human Origins Program at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. Your boy. Your boys. Best best institute ever. <laughs> and his study, co-authors, found that, found that the 330 stone tools they unearthed at Nyayanga date between 2.58 million and 3 million years ago. That's hundreds of thousands of years older than the previously old, uh, oldest known set of Oldowan tools, which were found in Ethiopia. 2.5 to 3 million years ago. Let me pause. Smithsonian there at the end. You know how weird this is going to sound because this is what people always say about Michael Cremo stuff when, when he's like, hey, we found a hammer and some ago, but somebody put it there. I could see the Smithsonian actually doing that. Yeah. Hey, let's go out here. Let's plant some stuff and find this. Like, we got to advance it. You know, things are moving. Mm-hmm. But and I'm not trying to be a, a jerk. I'm just saying I could see that being because I think they have even more wild stuff at the Smithsonian than three million year old tools. To be honest, oh yeah, I think this is like you know, not even in the vault. I think this is just laying around there. Like grab that off the coffee table. The good stuff's still in the vault. Mm-hmm. But it is interesting. Time keeps on slipping. It gets older and older. It just keeps getting older and older. It never stops. How does it never stop? 
How? Because we're technology is accelerating what we can find with all the tools that we have at our disposal now. Right. You know, the, in these tools, like there's, uh, you know, gamma cams now, which you can see gamma rays. That's interesting. You can actually film gamma rays and radiation, whether it's coming from the ground or, you know, it's it's in the atmosphere. Um, it's you're going to be able to like like we talked about you can photograph auras now you can right. you know gamma cams where you, you could detect with a with a geiger counter but to be able to photograph and actually have a, a video of where radiation is seems kind of wild yeah doesn't it yeah but imagine that tool 5 years from now with ai in, integrated into it and what kind of censoring technologies that DARPA has already been developing for 20 years that we are not going to know about for another yeah. 20 years. So it's going to accelerate everything that we know. And you're not going to be able to hold the wall back. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's coming. Yeah, it's going to just break through. It's going to be a flood of I think, finally admitting. I think it's all happening. We don't know everything. There's no set determined timeline. It's we got to find the data as it comes out. And fair, you know, not restricting. <laughs> and for the what do you, what do you see in this comment? Burton said he was radioactive for 48 hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you were Burton. <laughs> You should have brought a Geiger counter with you. Did they come up and right. wand you? They probably did. They probably did to check him. That carries with it a whole set of protocols of even going to the bathroom then. Yeah. yeah. Literally. <laughs> right. Same with like getting you know, chemotherapy and stuff. Well, our last topic for tonight, guys, and we saved maybe the strangest for last, but unless you've been living under a rock. Uh, what was that? My little thing fell over. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little excited. Uh, you know, two, what was it, Monday, we're hanging out at the end of the day, and Bub gives me a link that's talking about Diddy's house getting raided. And I'm this like, was just a few days ago. A few, it was Monday. And yeah, I'm whatever. like, this isn't real. This is some Nobody kind of... Nobody believe me. This can't be Diddy's house. This really? can't be actually happening. House is. And the whole thing house was is. unfolding Not live house is. on X. And then I go on YouTube, and there's the Fox 11 LA. The choppers were already there. Kim Kardashian, apparently a bunch of people unfollowed Diddy before the raid, the day before the raids. And so Ridley a lot Scott, of people Ridley knew Scott this Ridley Scott couldn't happening. get to his house. He lived. He was one of Diddy's neighbors because of what was going on. Ridley yeah. Scott, the director, producer, you yeah, know, Aliens. Scott Fear Productions. Um, yeah, he was He's like the man. stuck in the street waiting to get home. Yeah, they brought in some heavy, uh, heavy machinery to carry out and and Homeland Security. So a lot of some of you might not know, but Homeland Security has an investigation unit, and part of that different units has mm -hmm. been. International sex trafficking has been a big focus of Homeland Security for a long time. But you've never seen Homeland Security geared up with Bearcats. It was wild. 40 people on the ground from just their unit, plus local yeah. police, in Miami and in L.A. Uh, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't just your average, hey, we want to take a look around. No. Like They raided, raided, but... Even before we get into this, I'll say some of the the controversial the stuff surrounding you it that were on I've to been listening this to for a while. Like going back to even before Christmas, I remember you sharing all these things on Twitter about Diddy and and some of these lawsuits that we're, we're going to talk and about. And they st they go back to November, and then December there were two, and then in January of 2024 there was a fourth, a third Jane Doe, but fourth person that came out, and then. Not too long ago, in I think February, is when uh, Rod, Little Rod, correct? Yeah, came out with his lawsuit, that's which is the one aware that I'm a aware of. That's the one you were aware of, but I don't. There's other ones. There's, there's a lot. multiple. There's, there's a lot multiple, here. But and his plane flew down to somewhere in the Caribbean, I believe. His yeah. jet. Yeah, with him not on it. With him not on it, yeah. but 
if people were jumping off of his IG and Twitter and this and that and all the socials the day before this or that, so they kind of knew. There was a video that I saw of him at a party a day or two before this happens, over the weekend possibly, where people weren't interacting with him. Right. It was weird. Yeah, people he was like knew. he was like the sad kid at the party where like nobody would talk to him. And in January, Cat Williams warned everybody. Oh, well, like Necro <laughs> said, Cat Williams tried to warn him. I want to know yeah. what was on his jet that went to the Caribbean. Exactly. And that's, that's what, what I'm we talking, were about. talking about. Was, Did he loaded his plane up with shit? Well, they had and sent it off. TMZ or his neighbors rather is were, the theory. Were, were taking photos or had noticed TMZ got an interview with his neighbor and said that that might be the night that might be not the couple real. nights before. Okay. Fair Those enough. people might have been talking smack that from what be, I heard today. So I won't I okay. won't use that as a, a solid source. Let's but skip over that. But it there have been enough it people over that the they years. were moving. Somebody was well, moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a that's, bunch of thi- that's what that's I was saying. Real. The neighbors real. saw or yeah. someone saw them moving massive. They thought he was moving, moving. Yeah, there yeah. was so much stuff thought coming he was moving out, of the out of the house. And so if they, in the middle of the night, moved all this stuff, loaded it up on the Le- Love private plane, and flew to a non uh, extradition. Non extradition. What country. is it? Antigua? Yeah, the island of like Antigua, that. and they flew all that info because, guys, this is an Epstein situation from what it appears. He was filming things. He had oh, no, not just filming parties, things. Everywhere. Filming there were cameras everyone, in every all room. All the time. All the time. Yes. A honey Drugs. Trap. It's a honey trap. Drugs everywhere. Underage People kids. with fanny packs on, plastered with different drugs of every kind that you want. Yeah. Spiking the drinks. Yeah. Making people sign NDAs. And that's coming out in little Making rods. people sign NDAs. Yeah. So even if you go there, get roofied and this and that, he might have had people so scared that if you ever yeah. say anything, I'd be under an NDA. Or dude, NDA. dude, Mike Tyson wouldn't talk about Diddy. Tyson was... People, no, 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 no. I don't mean that way. To, you could talk about him. I'm saying he the, would invite you to you a party. they were afraid. Stop. He would invite you to a party, roofie the hell out of you. Yeah. Have you under, under an NDA. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Especially if you're some girl, no, you're some dude, nothing. whoever. You're not do anything. You're some uh, unimportant person. This person here has lots of money, lots of connections, lots Until of powerful it, friends. It happens. Now you have this flood of all this information, all these accounts. But here's the all thing, these man. V- weird videos of him as the Joker on the street and Halloween. Like I said earlier. It just seems Like so I said bizarre. earlier, it was all fine when it was Hugh Hefner. Yeah. But even now we've realized that Hugh Hefner oh. probably wasn't a good dude in that a lot of ways. I'm not trying to like really Playboy's get that far off track strange. here, but what I'm saying is this is not new. No. Epstein wasn't new, Hefner wasn't new, Diddy's nope. not new. None of these guys and gals out there are new. This is a real game that's always out there. But if we can keep kind of pulling on these weeds, let's keep weeding this garden, we'll get them. Yeah. If you keep an eye on things like this, if you actually stay vigilant and you go, hey, that's weird that Puff Daddy is like adopting different artists and kids and making yeah. people stay at his house and yeah. Bieber sleep overnight and get into weird compromising Usher. situations. Like Lil Rod, the guy that brought up the suit, you were talking about Cuba Gooding Jr., that stuff in there. Like there's all <laughs> kinds of weird stuff. I can't even get it. Prince that. Harry's named in one of these lawsuits. Like, dude. His, his this is old, on par with being not uncle. on par, but it's it's hey, uncle equally Andrew. as weird as being <laughs> Epstein esque. It's the bro. There's so many. The fact that there's another younger royal family member involved, Prince Andrew, and then Harry, and who knows? I mean, the only thing in that lawsuit that mentions Harry is just these blowout parties, these super secret parties, invite only, where they listed political people. Hollywood people, musicians, and the last line was British royalty like and uh like Prince Harry. So they didn't mention anybody's name within that, people from Hollywood politics, but Harry was mentioned oh, yeah. at the very end. And that is what blew up today because you have all the British press press is going off like the About this? About I didn't know that. Well, they're ruthless. The paparazzi that's a British term. Like, we had press. They've been crazy with paparazzi way before we had Because they're just obsessed Kardashians with the royals. and Britney Spears. Yes. I'll tell you what, if we had a royal yes. family, I'd be so sick well, they, right now. If I had to see the same family Prince for that Diana many years, was, unless they were cool. She crashed because the paparazzi was chasing Diana was her. cool. Yeah. And they Let's not go down that road. Let's stay here. Let's stay here. Okay. Get off. We're getting off the royals off. now. Let's, 
let's recap Diddy's uh, resume of yeah. allegations this, and controversies. Rolling We're going to take this Rolling Stone. Listed this Stone. yesterday. Yeah. Um, so in 1991, he had a basketball game, a celebrity basketball game, where somehow there was a stampede and as many as 29 people were injured, nine people died. It's kind of a weird one. 95, Jake Robel shooting. Um, I don't even want to read all these, but there was a shooting. Robles died weeks later at an Atlanta hospital. Combs denied involvement in the shooting, which Knight reportedly held him responsible for, Should Knight. In 98, he's uh, uh, attacking Steve Stout, who is um, the Nas man. He was the manager of Nas mm -hmm. um, for sending an erroneous copy of a um, version of Hate Me Now, a music video, which yep. had scenes in it that Puffy wasn't happy with. Um, so he attacked him. New York club shooting in 99. Scuffle with J. Cole in 2013. Punches Drake in 2014. Who punches Drake? <laughs> this one I actually remember. Fights UCLA coach in 2015. Yeah. This one I remember hearing yeah. about because back then, I'll be honest, like in that time and era in 2014 and all that stuff, I actually didn't use X or Twitter or yeah. Instagram or I had Facebook. Yeah. But I didn't really use it that much. I used it for the band I was in and stuff. So yeah, I was actually super, super, super late to social media in a lot of ways, which is fine because I'm a fast learner and I catch up. <laughs> but it's also because it's problematic. But um, that was the first one I really remember hearing about was like, yeah, I think it was because it was on like TV or There's something. There's been was stories like Puffy and fights rumors. Puffy fights a UCLA football coach over his son or this, that, or whatever it Not was. Not even just rumors. There's been incidents throughout all from the beginning. We're still going. Gina Hughes yeah. or Gina uh, uh, Gina Huynh, I don't know how to say her name, alleges abuse in 2019. Um, Cassie, ex-girlfriend uh, of Combs, alleges um, issues and files a civil suit against him in 2023. Jane Doe sues for 1991 rape and revenge porn. Um Third Jane Doe files lawsuit on December 6th. Yeah, right before the deadlines, too. Before. Tiffany Red writes an open letter corroborating Cassie's allegations. Hulu scraps family reality show. Yep. Combs settles with Dia Ego. That was supposed to take over which the Kardashians. Is all about a business enterprise with Ciroc and DeLeon, um, uh, liquor agents. So the, the settlement with Diego, Dia Ego. Um, and then Sean Combs sued for sexual assault by Love Album producer. This is the Little Rod one that I'm talking about, the $30 million sexual assault. Yeah. That one, if you read that court case, is wild. Well, that's, and that's the last thing that dropped. That's all the sex trafficking stuff and, that's, and it's gun trafficking. Everything. It's drugs, drug trafficking, sex trafficking, trafficking guns, honey pots. rape, abuse, yeah. pedophilia, yeah. minors. Yeah. I think there's minors in there. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of weird shit. I think the the little, uh, but who knows? Were they building this case for a long time? And Little Rod was that court cases was like the last thing that they needed to really. Because think about it, that case was in a Supreme Court, so that was a federal case, I believe. So which is why I think Homeland Security was involved because there's if Homeland Security is involved, that means that there's stuff happening across country lines that is going international homeland security doesn't involve themselves if it's something that's you know state to state that's more of an fbi situation so i, I found it really interesting of what you've never seen a raid by homeland security even epstein didn't get raided by homeland security that's what really blew my mind but you also have to realize it's the federal government right and you got to kind of look at it hmm why are they doing this all a little of a sudden? Bit sideways. Yeah, yeah, you can't really trust anything they do. If it's some kind of local, you know, uh, Miami PD, I think it's a little bit more credible in terms of, I don't know, it just seems weird that that full force of the federal government would go that hard. Here's the other thing. Where is the diddler? Where? <laughs> Where'd he go? No. Here's the other How did sad he part. Not, you know he was my at the car's, airport you know yesterday my car's walking name? around. I called my car Puff the Magic Wagon. <laughs> yeah, did. And for short, I called it P. Diddy. <laughs> yeah. Not joking. <laughs> not joking. That is what I always oh. call my car is Puffy. Or the, yeah, the Diddler. <laughs> Diddler. It's so bad, isn't it? 
Oh man, that was trending on Twitter on X yesterday. Just just yeah. the did hashtag the diddler. That's where I that's where I kind of like oh. laugh about it and I say I don't know if this is the best time to be alive or the worst time to be alive because you know But when you were talking to me about all this stuff, I don't know, since January and February and and I was just like, yeah, all this might these court cases are interesting. Like this is real for sure. But no one saw this coming. It's one of those things where it's like it's going to be settled in a civil suit. He'll pay him off. He'll write a check, which he did to Cassie. That was like thirty million dollars. Right. The but here's the way. Wait, 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 stop. But stop. it just didn't wait, 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 seem like anything wait, 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 would come so out stop, of it. Stop. I don't know from this case to the other cases whether or not there's actual like it, okay in the in the case with let me look, go back here. Um, I want to find the Cassie case. Did he do it or did he not? <laughs> she filed a federal lawsuit against Combs in New York alleging years of assault. Her lawsuit contains graphic allegations, okay, of rape, physical abuse, and trafficking. He, he this would, just came out in 2023. Yeah, the, no, November. That's the first one. And then after that was three Jane Doe's. So and she then came Little out, Rock. I didn't know all these. Five I cases get it, total. but I'm just now piecing the timeline together. This is wild. So Yeah. The thing that you just read. Well, I get it, but I'm saying I didn't read all the dates and times like November 16th, November 23rd. Yeah, it's all within the last four months, basically. This is so all So those, happened. I wonder if those girls coming out and and then Lil Rod, was he the, came out, or if all that was all kind of like working in concert already. Yeah. But like this dropping, but I'm, I guess. Well, Diddy man. came out, every time a new lawsuit came out here in the last few months, he came out. And his PR team made statements until the fourth Jane Doe came out. Then he actually publicly stayed, had uh, something that he wrote on Instagram, which was just, this is another case of people trying to get money. None of this is true, you know, but he's been very quiet. Nobody knows where D- Diddy is, though. He was at the airport yesterday. He, they the had TMZ was filming him that. walking around, I get that. pacing the, with sweatpants on. I feel like the last thing I saw or read was that He's he had gotten arrested. on a jet and his jet disappeared from radar. Well, who was the guy that said he would, wouldn't be surprised like, like if he a killed year himself? ago? Yeah, if he Epstein himself or... Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying... Guess, let me see if I can find that one. There was a... It was a uh, Oh, here's another one if you want a really strange one. Um, this is just a wild headline. Slowly at CERN in Geneva, the Large Hadron Collider Particle Accelerator is coming out of its regular hibernation once again. The first collision of proton beams are expected on April 8th. So they're firing up CERN on what day? The eclipse. Yeah. Wow. You know what else has been coming out that is anybody else in the chat or anybody else listening, if you can corroborate this as well. Have you seen these articles or posts coming out about saying about like this, the syndrome where people have where they like, they see people's faces like, yeah, like over embellished like a, like a goblin. Like the uh, Do you remember smiley the, faced man, right? You remember the sound garden video, Black Hole oh, Sun? Oh, yeah, yeah, And everybody's yeah. face is like distorting and getting weird. Yeah. And that's that story that Willis, Weird Willis, talked to us about that got uh, the smiley face man and Darren, uh, Woodrow Darrenberger, yeah. uh, injured cold. Injured cold. Gets mixed up and kind of tied into each other. But that was yeah. a totally separate incident was the smiling man that was walking up and communicating with him. Uh, so, yeah, that was a, that's a left turn there, bub. We went from Diddy to the Large Hadron Collider. I just I had that <laughs> saved in my um I had it saved in my notes. I had to uh had to talk about it. That's all I got. Yeah, the the Diddy thing was oh my god. Did it about break I just did not think that this was happening in How about unfolding. the bridge that went down? We didn't uh, talk about the bridge no, that we went didn't. down. The bridge we is strange. We should mention that. Uh what it could was, be just bad driving. It could be. There was a general on the Alex Jones show talking about how it, he called it like a black angel event. Black swan. Black swan event, which I don't know what that means. I've been hearing it a lot. I, applied to like the market, some, applied to, it's not a good thing. Is it some kind of like black flag? Uh, it's whatever. like a foreboding, like it's like 
foreshadowing in a story. But if you look like at that bad ship, things. it goes like this. It comes around and it just turns and drills that center giant beam in the middle. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the whole thing just collapses around it. And that barge is still there. I mean, it looks like an intentional smash. It, I won't, I don't know. I don't know. It's very, very bizarre. It doesn't though. seem good. There's another, there's a bridge in Rome that burnt yesterday, too. I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know, man. I think, I think it's. You think getting, the Mothman's gonna start appearing? All these bridges? <laughs> No, God, I hope not. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, yeah, it's just things are getting stranger and stranger and stranger. And this might even go back to my theory that I had the one time where, like, I'm a very dualistic yin and yang type person. So what that means is, as incredibly good as things get, they're also going to get incredibly bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the light and the dark is existing together. Right. All at the same time. Right. It's like, oh, if I have a yeah. dollar and I lose a penny, that's not so bad. If I have a dollar and I lose 50 cents, it's terrible. And then mm -hmm. as you swing that harder, like, oh, I have $1,000, and if I lose $10, it's not that bad. You know, things get more and more wild, though, as mm -hmm. we get bigger and bolder. Um, but light always overcomes the darkness. Pinprick of light can light up an entire dark cave. It's true. It's true. So we'll see keep, what happens with keep it all. Shining I mean, light on the ditties of the world, and we're gonna be all right, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Burton said Mothman was driving the boat. Dude hates bridges. <laughs> Jeez, um, amazing Burton. Uh, oh man, I uh, you know, I hate to say it, but things are just yeah, they're not slowing down in the world of strange. Things are getting stranger. Um. It's just, I didn't think we'd get to this point. I didn't. Did you? I did think, I mean, going back to what Cat Williams said was all you deviants out there, all you it don't deviants. matter in 2024, everything's going to come out. Don't right. matter if you're Diddy, don't matter if you're whoever it is. And he mentions Diddy by name. And I just remember. And Shannon Sharp just bent. He didn't know what to say. Shannon just was froze. Shannon grabbed his whiskey drink. He's like, oh, I'll, and he I'll goes, take another drink. All right, we'll take another. And then he puts it down and grabs a, t t another glass. Pours another drink. Pours another drink and then takes another drink. <laughs> yeah, here's he the. He didn't know what to say, dude. Here's the. Here's the, the but if you guys listen to the Rogan episode with Cat Williams, that was fascinating. Because they didn't get into any of the aluminum a, a little bit. But they more got into ancient civilizations, right. and and uh, you know extraterrestrial life, and, and a lot of like really out there. And and Cat knew a lot, man. He was super knowledgeable on a lot of weird, weird. He was talking about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth on that episode, and and uh, it's so. I mean, it look a lot of people had to be aware of this for a long time again, and like. You got, I've, I've started like just, I don't listen to 50 Cent. I like him. I'm just not like I listen to a lot of rap in 50 Cent. But am I following them now? Yeah. So I just <laughs> want to hear what they're saying. Yeah. I need to catch all this in real time about what's for going 10 on. Years. I know that now. It's I didn't crazy. know that back then. But he yeah. would have interviews where he would say wild Breakfast shit. Club. Talking about Diddy spiking drinks and this and that. And yeah. people in the crowd are like, yeah. Because he's saying it to a bunch of people that just have no awareness or context. It's just like you could say it to a, 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 a pen full of goats, and they'd be like, huh? Yeah. They don't know what you're talking about. Some of that stuff, and that's where it's like if you're somebody that knows about it on any level, whether it's this, whether it's UFOs or Sasquatch or ancient technology or whatever, how do you even sometimes get that ball rolling? Mm -hmm. How do you even go about that? Right. How do you get disclosure for certain things? And the only person I can think of that's done a really good job of trying that, and especially in ufology, was Greer, writing yeah. the disclosure book, like, yeah, getting all the stories, the getting press. all those people on paper to sign, you yeah. know, yep, I want, you know, I'll put my name on it and this and that. Associated but, Press Briefing yeah. in 2001. Yep. Well, hey, let's not, let's not beat, beat this horse too much. I'm sure that. 
There's more stuff. I'm sure out, Diddy's man. got a lot of Diddy to do yet. If they have, if they get a hold of all these recordings and Lil we, Rob, we don't want to talk about the has recordings. Hours of recordings, just him. But I'm talking about the stuff that was in the house that disappeared. If any of that, it's like, well, Epstein had tons of DVDs and recordings. And, okay. And and where's that data? The New York New York Police Department has that somewhere. Yeah. Do you know what I would say? The first thing that I was thinking of that made me think about all this was uh, this makes me go all the way back to the fucking Sandusky case. Oh, boy. There we go. It makes me think all the way back to that. Yeah. Everybody knew. Open secret. Everybody knew. It reminds me of how Stephen King books, like how like the thing that never, nobody does anything to prevent it. Like the, that was the scariest thing about the book. It was all the yeah. adults and nobody did anything to help these kids. Well, and it went. Nobody ever talked about the Second Mile Foundation and his five hundred one his nonprofit that yeah. he was running, and the weird stuff connected with essentially yeah. again a trafficking a cover for some kind of trafficking network. And there's that uh, journalist that was covering this, and all of a sudden his car crashes, and his laptop ends up in the bottom of a lake, and nothing further came out. He, so what he it, had been tracking that story for a long time. Let me ask you this then. What does that tell time. you? What does it tell you? It tells me that there were people on a massive scale that wasn't just Penn State. That well, new not, right, judges. not just that, but people that are supposed to be in powerful positions to do good are doing bad. Yeah, in my opinion, I, I think if you seek power and that's your objective, because if you were against innately, that, if you knew anything about it, if you had heard that guy's story, if you heard the journalist, if you were a cop locally that knew about that, yeah, the coach he knew and he tried to come out and he told all the right Mike authorities, McQuery? Mike McCleary, McCleary or McQuery. We'll see how far he actually... I don't know. I didn't read into all that, how far he actually went with it, and how much is... He went to the chancellor or the president, whoever is the top at the universe. First, he went to Joe Paterno. He went to Paterno, and, and Paterno, then he went to like, the president, and then he went to like, he this. He went over I, mean, I know that they, were, they went high up. And they all had meetings about this with him, had separate meetings, and it was logged somewhere and, and where they had found that, yes, it was talked about. And they decided to handle it all internally. It never did anything. That was in 2008 when Mike McQuarrie came out. He's trying to win another. And what was that, 2011 or 2012? Let's not rock the boat here too much. We're talking about a well institution of football. They ended up firing him from being a part of the coaching squad, uh, the coaching, uh, the the team. Officially, he was gone from the university. Yeah. But he still had access to all the facilities. He never really went away. He didn't technically work for they them. They just didn't have him front That's facing. Mike, Mike McQuery. They didn't have him front facing. That locker room situation, he was already fired from his job as a football coach at that point. But why is he it. still there? I don't know why there wasn't a homicide that day if you're Mike McQuery. Right. But it's a person of power. What do you do? That's what do this I do? Person for well, if you're Mike, you know, put I'm yourself. Lose, in that I'm going to lose my job if I'm Mike McQuarrie. Yeah, faster than he sure, lost his job. I'm going to. No doubt. I'm with you. Sorry, Jerry. You won't be using the facilities here ever again, <laughs> or anywhere oh, ever man. again. Uh, there would be no amount of getting myself zen. Yeah. Absolutely. I just I can't even fathom it. And that case yeah. was the first instance to me, not that there haven't been other cases, because, again, there have been more. But that, to me, was my first recognition moment. And, again, if you didn't pay attention to it, you didn't know it. If you don't like football, it didn't know it. If it didn't matter to you, you didn't see it. Like, it's real easy to not pay attention to some of the stuff if it's not what rocks your boat. Guess what? Doesn't re- It's not really what I want to know yep. about, but yep. I want to know about if it's happening because I don't want it to happen. Yeah. So sometimes I got to stick my ear and listen to garbage that I don't want to listen to. Yeah. But it always makes me think of Bowser and how that's what his kind of ethos of, you know, doing things where he's like, you know, listening to just yeah vitriol from people where he's like, I don't agree with you, but I need to hear what you're saying because yeah. I need to know the other side of this coin. So yep. Yep. it's yep. one of those. So, again, soapbox. I'm off it. <sighs> well, we're going to end this on a positive note. Guys, we had an amazing episode recording the other night with b mills oh my gosh uh uh she started the ohio uh, hocking hills bigfoot festival and conference uh she's been researching she was bigfooter of the year in 2019 
Uh, so that episode is going to be coming out not this Monday, but next Monday. Uh, we are dialing things back a little bit. We got some things going on on the personal level. We have some things that are cooking for gigs and different things. So uh, we have uh, we're going to keep uh, strange happenings moving forward. Uh, but you know, just so you know that there there's uh, some stuff happening behind the scenes here that we're trying to get our our thumb on on the pulse right now. We're we're in conversations and, and trying to do some big things right now. We just need some time to kind of re uh, organize the uh, collective effort and everything that's happening down here. And we appreciate your guys' support so, so very much. Uh, and, you know, don't forget about the Strange Road merch portal. Uh, go get your T-shirts, hoodies. Um, we've got uh, the T-shirts here. If you guys want one of these T-shirts, just hit hit me up. We'll figure yeah. out something. They're uh, very cool. We have purple. We have teal. We have gray, black. We have the hoodies. Uh, we've got some of these hats left, guys. Um, but hit us up. Uh, we'll make it happen. I'll, I'll ship it out for you and uh, send you a link, what, whatever we need to do. But uh, make sure you guys, if you're here on YouTube, hit that like button again. Subscribe. Got to have that notification bell. Everybody that's listening uh, on Apple, Spotify, we appreciate all you guys. And, uh, you know, we've been rocking and rolling with uh, the YouTube shorts and trying to grow the channel and all kinds of different ways right now. A uh, little comb. My, my nephew's been killing it and helping us out. And Stoner's been feeding him all kinds of great stuff to, uh, you know, keep keep things moving forward. And uh, hope you guys are enjoying it. Let us know what you think. Uh, hit us up. Let's c connect. And like I said, we have some big stuff coming down the pipe. So stay tuned uh, with all the social media stuff at The Strange Road. You guys know where to find us. And we're going to sign out. Much love to you all. Take care. We're out. Later, y'all. Peace. Good night. Good night.